thank you for coming back to see Natalie Diamond. I am back with another video that includes my husband. He is going to help me tell you how hard was it to not have sex before marriage. But before we get into that, I wanted to say that if you are not a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, okay? Hey, babe, what's your name? Subscribe. Subscribe, okay. The red button somewhere look for it and join the family so we're gonna just jump right into it and answer the question first how hard was it babe to not have sex before marriage it was very difficult actually especially as a man my testosterone <laughs> boiling it was difficult and the thing is you would think that the further and further you get along into the relationship it would be easier because you're like well you know since i already got into my head we're not going to do it so but on the yeah, contrary, we've had a couple it was, of those conversations. Yeah, on the contrary, it was it was very difficult. It was very difficult. It was difficult for me too. Um, it's like the more I fell in love with him, the more I wanted to be intimate with him. Not just even, you know, that, but just get closer. And you know, as you get closer, things tend to happen. So I had to be really careful with that. He had to be really careful with that. So it was definitely a challenge for us. Um, in the beginning, it was not that bad. It was like a piece of cake. We kind of walked into it saying, we could do this, you know? This is gonna happen, because God is in it, and we gonna make it happen with no struggles. <laughs> yes, I said struggles, but it's struggles. And, um, but yeah, no, God was like, yeah, nothing that you want come easy. So, yeah. I mean, he didn't say that, but that's basically what it was. Nothing that we want in life comes easy. So we did have to work really hard okay. to make sure that we do things the right way and get married on the accountability that we had put ourselves on in the beginning of our relationship. Yeah. So the objective of doing this, because I know a lot of people are like, why are you torturing yourselves? Like, it's not that serious or whatever. And for me, it's simple. I just want to make sure that God's hand is over my relationship. I was in relationships for two, three, four years in the past, and it didn't take me anywhere, you know? Otherwise, I would be married. I would have the family that I wanted, or I would be married. I really wanted God to bless whatever... I have with whomever he puts me with and I know that the only way that's going to happen for sure is if I do everything the right way so for me that's an easy what was the objective for you babe it was the the desired end result you no know, it's kind of like here's another it's kind of like like for me you no know, my I, I go to work out I eat clean I do all this stuff so I could one day you know, um, get the body that I'm looking for, get the um, stamina, the adrenaline, and all the stuff that I'm looking for so I don't, you know, so I don't grow weary, so I can live a long life for my wife and my kids. You know, it's kind of like the same thing with, with, uh, um, with the marriage. Like, I, for me personally, I wanted to do it this way. I wanted to apply the boundaries. I wanted to, the, to implement um, counsel and stuff like that. So, because I seen the finish line, I seen the light at the end of the tunnel, and that light at the end of the tunnel was this ring was the marriage, was the unity, was the one. So um, that was my objective because I know these were the things, these were the, the, the certain steps that needed to take place for me to obtain that um, objective, for me to get to that. And, you know, and I decided to do it and I stuck by it as hard as it was. You know, it, it's mm -hmm. difficult. It, it is difficult sometimes. Remember, every anything that is good, anything that is righteous is, is difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. Like it's funny because our bishop just just spoke on it the other day. Sin, being being sinful, it's easy. It's easy. Mm -hmm. It's 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 effortless. Mm -hmm. It's effortless. Going back to the health analogy, it's effortless to pick up a, a Burger King Big Mac and just just devour it. You don't have to think twice. You don't have to work into it. But to get up at five o'clock in the morning to go run a mile to go do weights and do all this other stuff is difficult. To yeah. eat clean, to make sure you know you grill your chicken instead of frying it and stuff like that. It's it's difficult. Spending a little extra money to eat at you know a healthier spot yeah. versus like McDonald's. You know, it's it's worth it. It's it's difficult, but the end result is it's worth it. it. And it's just good to know that God is in the center of it. It's like He exactly. He loves us all, but He looks to those who are obedient in him and it says that all over the bible he looks to those who listen to him and and he honors it he honors it it's just like going to school and doing your schoolwork and then you end up getting a good grade and then you get awards you get like put on it the um what's the the a-list thing that i haven't been dean's, school list. dean's list you know you get you get scholarships 
Why? Yeah. Because you're honored for doing your hard work, you know? Exactly. And that's what God does. He honors us for doing things the right way. So that was our objective. Yes. You know, we wanted everything to be as perfect as it can be. Of course, nothing's perfect. But we wanted it as perfect as can be. And with God, that's the closest you're going to get. Thankfully, we had some spiritual um, leaders that were able to help us think of ideas and things that we needed to do to overcome our yes. struggles. That is very pivotal in, in your walk yeah. as far as staying staying pure before, before, um, before marriage. Having, a spiritual, having spiritual leaders is yes. like a must. I, it's like what happens is you try and handle everything on your own and it's just it just don't work that way you know a lot of us wish that we could just take over the world with no help but it just does not work that way in this particular situation you must have people that could help you because it's a struggle it's hard in these streets for a pimp you know what I'm saying <laughs> so you got to make sure you got the right people in your circle to make sure you're able to come out the the, the, the ring like Rocky you know da -da -da, da -da -da. you know from the spiritual guidance we ended up having some awesome spiritual leaders help us overcome our hiccups and they gave us this term we didn't even know about called, called guardwells so I did make a video before. If you want to see that, I'll link it up there somewhere. But it is called boundaries or something of that nature. But since we're doing a video, I'll just kind of zip through what a few of things that we did to help us just in case you're watching and you want to know what could you do. The thing is, is this is kind of like a case by case basis. You got to you got to know you, you got to know your partner, you got to know the situation. But some of the boundaries that um, that we dealt with was um, the music. Like for me, music was nothing. So I could listen to like Joe to see because I'm a, I'm a very big R&B guy. So I love R&B. So I could listen to that stuff and, you know, don't feel any type of way or don't feel any any different. But for my wife, um, it was, it, you know, if, yeah. if she listened to some H-Town, some Three Peas or something like that. Like, hey, you know, <laughs> like stuff like that. It was, it, it was unhealthy for us. The big one, the huge one was no yeah, kissing. No kissing. We didn't do kissing. And so many people ask us questions about that because... It's like a big step, but it really, really helped us. You know, some people have the capability of doing that and leaving it there, but we particularly did not have that willpower, yeah. okay? So we had to just chop it out of the picture to make sure that we didn't cross the, the guardrail or the boundaries before our big day came. Yeah. So and it, and it puts that much more appreciation into the relationship between both parties, especially as your journey um. Progressive. Uh, progresses on to, to, to that end result, which is marriage. We didn't allow each other to go into one another's homes. Um, he didn't come over until about a year after we were together. And that one is was basically because I knew that when he came into my home, I would want to cuddle. I would want to do all these things. Movie night can't just be movie night. You know, you want to cuddle. You want to do all these things. And like, I didn't have that willpower. Some people can but I couldn't, so he respected it and we didn't do it for a very long time until we got really strong and our foundation was a little less shaky, then he came over. Yeah. So, so, so mind you, like these things are things that work for us. You know, mm -hmm. everybody's different. Everybody's a case by case basis. And also, I don't want you to go and say that, well, this person is doing this. So then that means, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's not okay. Or just cause we didn't do it. You say it depends on you. It depends on your preference. And, you know, just cause you see another Christian couple that, that does kiss and, and they're about to get married and stuff like that, that doesn't make them any, any, any wrong or any less right or whatever. It's just, that's just their preference because they could control that. You know, some people, some people do cheek kissing. Some people don't kiss at all. Don't we even did put kissing lips. on the cheeks. Yeah. We just didn't do on the lips. Yeah. Because, you know, once you give in, you just want to go in. Yeah, exactly. You know, you want to go in. And we was like, uh, no, we're not going to do that. So we cut that. We just cut it out completely. Yeah. Like I said, so it's just that you got to, like I said, you got to know yourself. You got to know yeah. your partner. You got to know your, the situation and the surroundings around you. And yeah. there's, there's multiple things that, that, that that makes up a boundary it's just a matter of what works, works for, you. for you yeah exactly so now with all of that laid on the table would you say that it was worth it very much worth it very much worth it and yeah. what i always what I, I always say to people 
especially when it comes to um, telling them, yeah, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't have any physical, any intimate um, contact with my wife before married. They'll be like, wow, why? Because it's like this. It's like, I've done it for so long the wrong way, you know, um, whether it's been so much different relationships, you know, all of them was always the wrong way. I always, you know, we, I lived with the woman before marriage and all this other stuff. So I'm like, you know what? I did it. I did it the wrong way for so long. You know, let me just try something new. What's the worst that could happen? I could get married, which is the best thing. <laughs> but you know, they were like, what's the worst that could happen? So I was like, I did it the right way, you know, and God, God saw that he honored it and he blessed it. It was, it was, you know, one of the most, yeah. it was the best decision of, of my life. Yeah. And same thing with me. I was not a virgin before I met him. When I became closer to, when I gave my life to Christ, I d definitely did say that I wanted to remain abstinent before I, you know, got married. So it was a decision that I decided to make because I did go through the other um, life. I did experience that and it didn't work. So we have people out here going through that all the time and never realize that you can change it. You know, yeah. you're in a relationship for three, six, seven years sometimes and you're not married, you know, or sometimes Sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. So here you are wasting all of your time giving someone your all. And it just, you know, was, there was no point. You know, I don't want to say there was no point because God always does things and, and able to make beauty turn into ashes or ashes turn into beauty. Mm -hmm. But, um, that, you know, you don't want to waste your time. No one does. So if you can do it the right way, the Lord sees it. He honors it. And it's like things happen a whole lot quicker for you. And it happens quicker for you with the right person. Like, who doesn't want that? Yeah. You know? So we just both kind of figured we went through our own decisions before. We came together and decided to do it the right way. And we never witnessed another relationship like the one that we have. And we're very thankful. And we know that it has everything to do with honoring what God wanted us to do as a couple. Yes. So... Remember, the foundation of everything should always be God. It should always be, not, I'm, I'm not saying God, because everybody has a God. It should always be Jesus. The foundation of everything, no matter what it is, whether it be work, school, relationship, you know, whether it be with, with, a, with a significant other or family, it should always be Jesus. Amen. As long as you keep Jesus in the center of it all, then, you know, everything else, everything else is good. Amen. Because the Bible says, first seek, first seek the kingdom of heaven and everything, not a partial thing, not a little bit, not half, not, not, not a quarter, but everything will be given unto you. So as long as you keep that in mind, you know, it's, it's, it's going to work out for your bit. At times, you know, it's, it's like, if you mess up, don't, don't, don't be bad on yourself. Don't, don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. It's just a matter of getting yourself, picking yourself back up and continue marching on to that goal, to that yeah. end result, to the finish line, to the light at the end of the tunnel. Cause as long as you, as long as you continue, you'll, you'll, you'll achieve. There's the, and I, I heard this, there's two, there's a difference between stopping short and falling short. Stopping short is because you yourself stopped moving. Mm. Falling short is because you gave it every single last thing that you had. And the good thing about giving every single last thing that you have, because when you can no longer, he'll do the rest. Please do not hesitate to email me or leave comments below. Thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it or want to see more. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Do you have anything to say? Um, I hope this advice finds a home in your heart and that, you know, if you're in a relationship right now, you know, we, we pray for you. We wish you the best of luck. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it, it will be difficult. But it's possible. And, and worth it. And we're the proof of that. You know, it's, it's very well worth this. Yes. You no, know, it's, it, it's awesome. So. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Love you as usual. And don't forget to subscribe. 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 <laughs> we love you guys so much. And see you next week. I will see you next week. I will bring my husband soon. Then thumbs up if you want to see more muchacha. of him. Okay? Adios, muchacha, muchacha. Yes. Love you guys. Bye.